Uh, in this video, we're going to discuss the quantum harmonic oscillator. So, harmonic motion takes place when a system vibrates about an equilibrium configuration, and there are many examples on all scales, right? Uh, such as an object attached to a spring or an atom vibrating about its equilibrium position in a crystal lattice. And the condition for harmonic motion is the presence of a restoring force that acts to return the system to its equilibrium configuration when it is disturbed around it. Um, so if no energy is lost, the system oscillates indefinitely and the inertia of the mass causes it to overshoot equilibrium. So in the case of a simple harmonic oscillator, the restoring force on a particle of mass m is linear which means f is proportional to the particle's displacement x uh, from its equilibrium position, okay, in the opposite direction. Uh, so we have f is equal to minus kx, and this relationship is known as Hooke's law. <coughs> so in, using Newton's second law, uh, we get this equation, and if we uh, rearrange it, we get the equation for the harmonic oscillator. Uh, and the common solution is x is equal to a cosine 2 pi mu t plus phi and mu is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of k over m and is the frequency of the harmonic oscillator and a uh, is the amplitude and the value of phi, uh, the phase angle, depends on what is x uh, uh, at t equal to 0, okay? Uh, so the simple harmonic oscillator has a lot of importance in both classical and modern physics, not because actual restoring forces in many systems adhere to Hooke's law, but because for small displacements, uh, these restoring forces reduces to Hooke's law, and as a result, any system that exhibits small vibrations about an equilibrium position behaves like a simple harmonic oscillator, okay? And this is because... Um, any restoring force that is a function of x can be expressed in a Maclaurin series about the equilibrium position x equals zero. Uh, so it's given by this equation. And since uh, x is equal to zero is the equilibrium position, then f at x equals zero is equal to zero. Uh, and for small x, the values of x squared and x cubes are very small compared with x. So the third and higher terms here of the series can be neglected. Uh, and the only term of significance when x is small is the second term. Um, and so fx uh, reduces to uh, this expression, uh, which gives Hooke's law uh, when uh, this is negative, OK? Uh, and so all oscillations are simple harmonic in character if their amplitudes are sufficiently small, okay? And the potential energy function ux that corresponds to Hooke's law can be found from calculating the work needed to displace a particle from x equals 0 to x against this force. Uh, so we have ux is equal to minus integration of 0 to x fx dx. And this uh, is equal to half kx squared. Um, and the figure here shows the plot, uh, which is a parabola. Uh, and if the energy of the oscillator is E, uh, the particle vibrates between minus A and A, okay? And E and A are related by this equation, so E is equal to half K A square. Uh, and the figure here shows how the potential energy of a diatomic molecule varies with internuclear distance R. Uh, and as you can see, it is a non-parabolic potential. Um, but uh, but near the minimum here, you can see that the shape of the curve is nearly a parabola, okay? And so a non-parabolic potential energy can be approximated by a parabola for small displacements. Um, and the restoring force uh, then will have approximately Hooke's law form. Uh, and as with a spring, uh, the, the diatomic molecule that is suitably excited can undergo simple harmonic oscillations, okay? Uh, so after representing this classical picture of a harmonic oscillator, we can anticipate the following quantum modifications to the model. Um, so first, the allowed energies will not form a continuous spectrum, but discrete levels of certain energy uh, values, okay? And second, uh, the lowest uh, allowed energy will not be equal, uh, E equal to zero, uh, but it will be some definite minimum, e, e equal to E naught. 
And also the third uh, modification that there will be a probability that the particle penetrates the potential well um, it is in and go beyond uh, minus A and A. Uh, so Schrodinger equation for a harmonic oscillator is given by this equation and we can simplify it by introducing the dimensionless quantities y and alpha, okay? And mu uh, here uh, is the classical frequency of oscillation, which was given by this equation here. Um, and so we have uh, this equation. Uh, so for the wave function to represent an actual particle, it has to satisfy the normalization condition. Uh, so if we substitute for uh, psi uh, in this uh, uh, normalization condition, it is fulfilled when alpha is equal to 2n uh, plus 1 and n is an integer equal to 0, 1, 2, etc. And since alpha is equal to 2e over h bar mu, uh, the energy levels of a harmonic oscillator whose classical frequency is mu uh, will be given by this equation, okay? And so as you can see, the energy uh, of a harmonic oscillator is quantized in steps of h mu. Uh, and note here that when n is equal to 0, e naught is equal to half h mu, um, and it is known as the zero-point energy, okay? Um, and so this shows that a harmonic oscillator in equilibrium with its surroundings will approach the energy e naught equal to this value. Um, it will not approach e is equal to 0, okay? Uh, as the temperature approaches uh, zero kelvins, okay? So even at zero kelvins, uh, the harmonic oscillator has a finite energy. Uh, so as you can see, the energy levels of a simple harmonic oscillator are evenly spaced, and the figure here shows a comparison of the energy levels of a simple harmonic oscillator with those of a hydrogen atom here, um, and of a particle in a box with infinite walls. Um, and the figure also shows the shapes of the potential energy curves, okay? Uh, so for each parameter value alpha n, there is a different wave function psi n, okay? And it consists of a polynomial h n y called the hermit polynomial uh, in either odd or even powers of y uh, and an exponential factor e to the minus y square over 2 and the numerical coefficient here. Uh, so the general formula for the nth wave function is given by this expression and it follows from psi n satisfying the normalization condition, okay? And the first three Hermit polynomials are given by these equations. Uh, and the wave functions corresponding to the first three energy levels of a harmonic oscillator are shown here. Uh, so, as you can see, if the particle is oscillating classically with an energy En, it would be confined between minus A and A. But according to quantum mechanics, the particle can penetrate into these forbidden regions beyond minus A and A, okay? And this means a particle can exceed the amplitude A, which is determined by the energy, uh, with a probability that is exponentially decreasing. And those uh, exponential tails beyond x equal plus or minus a decrease in magnitude with increasing n. Uh, so for example, for n is equal to zero, the probability density is shown here. And classically, the probability of finding the particle at a given position is larger at the end points where the particle is slower. Uh, and it is least near equilibrium at x is equal to zero where the particle moves more rapidly. Uh, but in quantum mechanics, the opposite is true, as you can see, uh, for a quantum mechanical oscillator, for the energy level corresponding to n is equal to zero, the probability density, uh, psi zero square, absolute square, has a maximum value at x is equal to zero, and it drops off uh, on either side of this position. Uh, but for n is equal to 10, as you can see, uh, psi 10 absolute square, when averaged over x, uh, it has the general character of the classical probability, where it's maximum at the endpoints, right? And this is an example of the correspondence principle where in the limit of large quantum numbers, uh, quantum physics gives the same results as classical physics. Uh, so thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next video.